how to disentangle issues the mentee raises, even if the mentee is confused and is about to quit the mentoring arrangement. When the issues are brought, it might be helpful to think of them in the following three ways. The first one is you could take a look at it and say, is there going to be a fear of not dealing with it? Or, ah, knowing I missed dealing with it could come back to haunt me. The third one is I dealt with it. Now, these three options, as I call them, are important when you're chatting, uh, sharing with the mentee. Because the notion of fear is the belief of the mentee that something's going to happen in the future that's going to cause more pain than pleasure. And that's not a great way to deal with issues. The second one is, if I know I missed it, in other words, I may have missed some learning, I may have missed some great experience here by letting it sort of flutter away. Again, it may return and you may end up having the first one with a fear of dealing with it rather than remembering getting into the third element of this, which is dealing with it. Now, you'll notice the statements uh, that are on the screen here. You'll notice the it in the, first, uh, in the first statement, the second statement, and the third statement. It in the first statement means is that the issue is being given thingness. In other words, oh, I've turned my attention. This is something that I'm going to need to deal with, and I call it the it. In the second statement, what it's really about is there's a capital I and T, and it's I I'm thinking about this is um, I'm, I'm looking at dealing with this because it's actually surfacing uh, to a greater extent. But knowing I'm going to miss it, you actually miss out on the third it, which you'll notice is capitalized IT. And what it stands for is I transition. So the key here is that if you actually deal with the issue, I transition. In other words, the mentee transitions into a, a place of this learning and being able to then take action that has more substance to it. And that is a great way for the mentor to interact with the mentee. Now, I thought what also would be helpful, and it's coming up on the screen now, is the diagram that's before you. Now, with this diagram, what I'm suggesting is the following, is that if you are gonna deal with the issues, and we know that issues are questions that are unanswered, then as a mentor, think of it from this perspective. Listen to the question. Listen to the five W's and H that form the question. So if it's coming at you from the perspective of why, why am I doing this or why do I need to deal with it? You're really talking about it from the influence of direction and strategy. In other words, why am I doing it? You're actually saying, okay, then is this going to influence my direction? If it is, I'm going to need some kind of strategy to deal with. That's the underpinning that's happening with that why question. When you turn to the how question, the how question is really about the arrangement to, to deal with it, the, the structure that is required to take the actions that are necessary, uh, sort of the forms, the systems. Now, when you get to the who question, there's the who of you as a mentor and there's the who of the mentee. But really what we're looking at here is the connection between the two of you having the conversation, but more so who is going to be influenced by the mentee being able to deal with that issue. And therefore, there is a deeper relationship that is born for you and the mentee. We call that the mentoring relationship. But again, the ripple effect in terms of the mentee working with those that are influenced by dealing with it or having the issue dealt with. Now, there's a couple of other ones here because where there are three other W's that we need to take a look at. Uh, the next one is around the what. And I'm using what a little differently than a lot of other people do because I use what to talk about the resources that are going to be allocated to dealing with the issue. So what time, what effort, what money is required to deal with that issue? Now, 
when you hear things like, okay, um, how much time am I going to need to do this? They're really asking what time resource do I have to allocate to this? There's the hows of the step, but there's the allocation of time. And therefore, you've got to bring those together. It's sort of like when you think about the effort that's needed is who, do, who am I to be doing it with whom and what, what relationship, what effort is required to make that relationship work, to get things done that need to get done. And then the time is, in many ways, is that it's a constant flow and therefore it's about how and who and why to use that time wisely. So what time is required, or when you ask how much time is required, you're really saying, okay, from a time perspective, what do I have to set aside to be able to deal with this? So think about it from the what as the time, effort, and money. You've got the how from the structure and the arrangement. You've got the who from the relationship and the connection. You've got the why from the perspective of direction and strategy. Now, these two wings that you see in the diagram are about communication. I share with just about everyone I interact with, and especially to encourage mentors to understand this with the mentees, is that communication is about sending the message, yes. It's also about what hinders and helps that communication in terms of uh, the corridors and, and blockages that are there. It's also the message that you're sending. And also it's about the coordination of the behavior of the other person that you're interacting with or the group. In this case, mentor and mentee. So from a mentor's point of view, if you're helping the mentee here, then you've got to be listening to the questions. And I've mentioned that already. But when it comes to the communication, it's also linked specifically to the where and when. So when you think about the where, what you're drawing down, the where is about the media, about the place. And it links to the notion of uh, money and profitability because where it takes place is balanced off by when it takes place. So from the when perspective, it's also about the time and the message that's linked to the effort and movement. Now, when you bring those two together, this notion of when and where, it sort of forms a unit because you, when you ask someone, are they going to uh, complete the task, then there's usually a time and a place assignment to that. So when you're able to understand the, um, the importance of the when and where and set it up for success, then when you're in conversation with the mentee, they are starting to appreciate the importance of these five W's and H that are on this diagram, both from the perspective of it's a really uh, easy way in which to frame up what might be the issue that I'm actually talking about and get more clarity inside themselves, but also to be able to look at this diagram like a, like a filter and going, oh, okay, so I'm actually placing it here. What might be some ideas to be able to deal with it from a structure point of view, or from a direction point of view, or a relationship point of view, or a time, effort, and money point of view? It, it allows you to get more perspectives of what's available to you. Now, I'm gonna be creating a course on uh, the different types of issues that might arise. There is seven of them and they vary from that what is called complex to simple and what's in between. And I, I'll be developing um, a short course on that. What's down below is the contact page of my website. Uh, please reach out through there. Uh, again, you can uh, leave a message on the YouTube channel or wherever you might be seeing it. I'll pick it up. But if you use the contact page, it will get to me very quickly. I've also created a course on coaching and mentoring because I wanted to explore what other people were sharing with it. I started to do that and then I realized there's some confusion out there to this point. I think there's an issue here about sharing uh, what we know about coaching and mentoring. I disentangled it by watching many videos and 
synthesizing what I picked up along with my own writing over the years. And I prepared a course on this uh, coaching and mentoring decoded. And what I do is I help understand, well, there's a pathway for them called guide on the ride, but there's also this notion of the connection. How do they connect as this guide on the ride? But also how do they might compete against each other and how do they work together if you were to bring them both to a conversation? I just offer that to you out of my own uh, experience and you can certainly let me know uh, down below with the comments because I'm gonna ask you to subscribe and comment and like and share and hit the, the bell to get more notifications of what's available. So as a mentor, find those ways in which to deal with those issues with your mentee and do it in such a way that when the mentee leaves the mentoring arrangement, they have the tools and techniques about being able to deal with the issues so that when they go to mentor, which is one great thing that unfolds out of your mentoring arrangement, then you will have given them some tools and techniques to be able to work with their mentee. And that is a wonderful gift that you can bestow as a mentor.